So does creating free content get you clients? Let's talk about this. Well, it can. And I will give you a seven point plan uh, overview uh, by the end of this video. But I wanna begin by giving the foundational perspective that if you feel entitled to clients because you've created a bunch of content, this is where things go wrong. I want to read to you a, uh, an email that I got or comment that I got um, from somebody who is in someone's free Facebook group. So here, here's what the comment wrote, uh, commenter wrote. I just unsubscribed from a group, which I had been a member for only three months. She was sharing free content along with doing some live videos. Eventually, she posted that people are taking advantage and not hiring her as a coach after consuming her content. Literally, she said, if you don't want to move forward, just leave. So I left because I sensed anger and lack. And I can relate to this from both the consumer and from the coach and creator side. Because when you set up this funnel, sales funnel, expecting that, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work hard to make this launch go well by putting up a bunch of content. And I'm expecting that, of course, with all this generosity that I give out, they're going to be generous back. They should be. Because here I am giving of my energy and my skills and experience, and you know they should see the value here and, and sign up for my thing. And here's the thing, you are in your head about that, right? You don't know how much value they're actually receiving until you give it and then watch the reactions. So from the beginning of the funnel planning or the campaign or the marketing, you're, how can you expect that they're going to get value and therefore, and the offer itself is aligned enough that they'll sign up and pay for it not only do they get value from the content, but the offer, is it aligned for them? So there are these questions that a lot of people don't realize they need to answer before they start doing marketing. But I'll tell you, just for simplicity's sake, the simplest way that I think about creating content, the simplest way is the more I can remove my entitlement to getting results, the more that I can create, see the process of creating as worthwhile in and of itself, then the more I'm enjoying the process and finding growth, at least personally, through the process without needing to wait for, wow, oh, look at the results there. Now I feel like it was worthwhile. Now, it's a practice. I am a human being, and of course, I'm not perfect at practicing it, but it's important for me to remind myself of that. And I'm hoping that this video will remind you of the deeper purpose as well. To simply summarize, the deeper purpose for me of creating content is exploration and service. And if I can attach myself to those deeper purposes and detach myself from the expectation or even the entitlement of the results, even getting likes or comments or, or, or whatever, let alone sales on something. If I can detach myself from the expectation, the more I can detach myself from the expectation and the entitlement of that, the more I can lean into the deeper purpose which then allows the process of creating itself to be worthwhile. It's no longer a means to an end. The process itself is the end, it is itself part of life, part of a worthwhile life. And interestingly, if I connect myself more deeply to exploration and service, my content becomes more authentic. It becomes more aligned and attuned to my energy signature and the people that I tend to attract seem to be more aligned with my overall offerings as well. 
But again, it's the tricky part is continually reminding myself, yourself of the steeper purpose. And before we create content, we lean into that purpose <clears throat> and continually um, embody that purpose as we create. And then once the thing is created, we release it into the world with blessings and we get curious about how it does, whether it does really make an impact or whether it was simply a, an experiment that, okay, didn't get results, but at least we found the creation process itself worthwhile. So that, that, is, that makes marketing itself worthwhile, right? Because you're enjoying yourself and getting growth along the way. And just to clarify, when I say exploration and service, what I mean by that, <clears throat> when I'm creating, like right now as I'm making this video, I am exploring my ideas. I have some thoughts already outlined to share with you, of course. But I'm, I'm exploring how I'm going to say those ideas. I mean, it's part especially true when you're making video, <laughs> a lot of exploration and um, uh, spontaneous insights are happening, okay? Uh, but even when you're writing, of course, you're also exploring, hmm, what if I go in this direction? Oh, what about this? Um, oh, I never, I never went this deep before. Let me try that, okay? So the exploration um, expands your ability to create. It also gives you all kinds of cool insights and aha moments. And um, it also is, is a struggle sometimes, of course, because you're like, oh gosh, this, this doesn't feel like it's going in the right direction. Or mm, I regret having said the thing I just did or whatever, if it's on video. But, but exploration, it's all part of exploration. We make mistakes and we quickly forgive ourselves of the mistakes seeing that the bigger picture is going to be fine because we are growing, becoming better, and learning about ourselves and learning about um, our ideas. So exploration is, is, of course, it's worthwhile in and of itself, uh, inner exploration um, and outer service. So inner exploration and outer service. And when I'm exploring, I'm not just, if, if I was just doing inner exploration, period, I could just be journaling. I could just be taking a walk and you know thinking, right? Um, or I could be talking to a friend about this too, right? But I'm content creation for me, especially content authentic content marketing, is this is this integration of inner exploration and outer service. And inner exploration I've I've spoken about now. Outer service is basically I am exploring some ideas with the faith that it will make a positive resonance and impact with somebody else. Otherwise, I'd just be doing it privately. So this, this I call public journaling. <laughs> okay, public journaling. Right? So publicly exploring your ideas with the faith and the, um, and the trust that at some point, this is going to be make a positive difference to somebody else. May it, you know, it's, it's sort of like a, like a prayer and a, and a, and a meditation, like may it be of service in a positive and life-giving way to somebody else. And if it does, wonderful. But even if it doesn't, you had the intention to serve and you were doing an inner exploration. So it was worthwhile anyway, right? And that kind of bless and let go kind of attitude towards content creation allows you to really come alive in your heart of heart of creativity and your heart of service. It allows you to really just, you know, um, <laughs> it's kind of like dance, dance when nobody's watching kind of thing. But here we are, we are dancing, trusting that our, our, our public exploration of this dance will serve somebody down the road. And if we keep showing up again and again and again, exploring in different ways, and, and aiming to serve in different ways, we're going to notice that some of our explorations and services are of resonance with others. And many of them might not be, and that's okay. We still enjoyed, hopefully, we still grew from the exploration. So this is why I say content as ministry. Content as ministry. Content creation as an act of ministry. 
you're ministering to yourself actually to your your explorations and your growth but you're also hopefully ministering to somebody else as well um bringing more well-being bringing more uh, insight bringing more transformation bringing more uh, hope and connection to somebody else you might not know who that is and chances are there will be many who are touched that don't even let you know so you kind of let that go and let that create the ripple effect you have the you have this good intention and you let it create the ripple effect as as it goes outward okay so back to well how does this all create create clients george okay i just need money <laughs> well hopefully by this point that you're you're still watching this so you know that it's not just about the money it's about well the the, the, the deeper and grander purpose of life, um, which no matter how much or little money we make, may it be worthwhile, which is exploration and service. All right, so let me give you, as I promised, the seven point plan. And, and uh, one more thing before I get there. There is no, so whereas like create content to, to, make, to make money or to get clients, there is kind of like this end. Okay, you, I, I made this piece of content and I got a client. Great, wonderful. But when you go deeper and go from exploration and service, there is no final end to it. It is a journey that continually rewards you. So that's this is why no matter what, you've already gotten the reward. But okay, let's talk about, well, can it continue to also bring reward to my business? All right, so, so here are the basic uh, seven seven steps to this okay step number one well i think we've already done, did, uh, done step number one which is to remind yourself of the glorious purpose of creating content and that um you know every day you every time you show up it's a privilege that you've been given the gift of another day where you can explore and where you can serve i hope you will really feel into that opportunity and that gift deeply so really that's the first step we've, we've talked about this for for, for for half the video now right to remind and 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 deepen again your purpose maybe you need to do a little bit of journaling about the purpose before you start creating or or, or prayer or a little bit of meditation or or talking to a friend or coach or something about it if you can anyway so that and then um uh, and then the second step is to go ahead and actually create. So after the meditation, you know, or you go ahead and actually create, but as you create, do it in that service of exploration and, and uh, do it in that spirit of exploration and service, not, not thinking, oh, I wonder if they're going to buy. Well, I wonder if they're going to buy. Okay. Or I wonder if they're going to like this thing or not, right? Like detach yourself from, from the need for a reaction, right? So you create in, in the moment. Okay, you create in the moment of exploration and service. Okay, you, you, that's step two, the actual creation part. Step three now is, well, now that you've, you've made it authentically, now it's time to get a little bit strategic now because we were talking about doing this to get benefit for your business. Let's do it a bit strategically now and make sure that content is seen by as many people as you know how to do reach and I have a blog post on my website for my seven favorite ways of expanding the reach of, of content. So I will be sure to put a link uh, below this video for, for that seven ways. But essentially, it's things like, well, are you posting it to the different social platforms where you seem to be getting some reactions? At least you should experiment with social platforms and see if you get reactions. Try it out for you know two or three months, and if you if you do get some reactions there, we'll continue going. Right? It's things like maybe you run paid ads to distribute your content. That's what I do on a regular basis. Um, my favorite ha these days is is Instagram ads to basically uh, get my posts out there to more people. But I I also do YouTube ads sometimes. I do Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads. Um, so, uh, and I've done Twitter ads as well. Anyway, distribute your content to more people in whatever ways you know how. And again, check out the way, the, the seven reach methods in, in the link below if you like. That's step number three, right? Getting more reach. Step number four, and by the way, these seven steps are not something you do like, okay, on a Friday, I'm doing all seven steps. These are this, this is like a seven point plan. This is an overall plan, okay? 
But one, two, three, this is something you do when you create content and then, and then distribute it. S step number four is more stepping out and looking at the bigger picture now. As you start gathering an audience, okay? First of all, as you start gathering an audience, recognize how lucky you are, how fortunate you are that they would even give you their attention. <laughs> so step number four is a, once again, a bit of a purpose reminder step. Like, oh my gosh, people are gifting me their attention when there are millions of other YouTube videos they could be watching. There are unlimited numbers of blog posts and social media posts that they could be, but they decided to actually watch my video or to read my blog post. Okay. It was in front of them and they didn't just scroll by. They could easily, and the expectation usually is most people will just scroll by. That's normal behavior. It's just to scroll by it because it's not interesting enough, but they found some resonance here and they found it just interesting enough to pause the scroll and go, let me go ahead and, and look at this. And the same thing with email. If you send out an email, they could just not look at your email, but they opened it and they are gifting you that attention. So I just, step number four is just to, a reminder to yourself of it is all a gift. It is all a gift. Someone else is already gifting you the currency that they cannot get back, which is time and attention. Be grateful for that, right? Be grateful for that. Okay. And then step number five, again, this is stepping back here and seeing the bigger picture here. Get curious about what your audience wants from you. As you start growing an audience and noticing they're gifting you their attention, get curious about what they want from you. Well, how do you do that? Okay. Look at the content you put out there. Again, stepping back in the bigger picture. For example, once a month, you look at the content you put out there in the previous month and you notice hmm, which of those pieces of content did got more reactions than the other pieces. Because whatever gets the more reactions is your audience's clue for you to, hey, this made a difference for us. Can you please make more stuff like this? Okay. So look at your top performing pieces of content occasionally, once a month, maybe once a quarter, sometimes even once a week, if you're doing a lot of things, putting a lot of things out there and notice your top performing pieces, the ones that get the most reactions, the ones that get the most reactions or, or, or comments. And Ask yourself, okay, how does that compare to my other pieces that didn't get as many reactions? And how can I adjust myself more in that direction of getting, creating those, those kinds of content? You, you, you can do public, public journaling on many topics, right? You might as well do public journaling on the topics that also make a resonance and a difference for your audience, okay? Step number six, talk to your audience about what they want in terms of services and products. I call this process the market discovery process. If you're interested, I have an entire course that goes deep into the market. It's called authentic market discovery, and you'll learn and practice the, the entire method of it. But essentially, what we're doing is reaching out to people who are reacting and commenting to our, to our posts, okay? Especially those who comment, right? And you invite them to say, hey, would you be willing, open to uh, doing a call with me because I'm trying to get to get to know my audience better. And if you would be open to do that, or we could have a, have a chat right here. I'd be super grateful. Can I ask you a question or two to better understand you and what you're looking for? And what you're, what you're trying to ask them, what you are asking them is what are they still looking for in your field? Are they already using some service or product in your field? And if not, what is what they still looking for in your field? Anyway, if you want to go deep into market discovery, I have a course about it. But essentially, we're trying to discover their buying patterns and their buying requests or yearnings. What kinds of products and services are they, are they looking for? Okay. And then step number seven, create the services or products that they're looking for or, or curate them. You either create, for example, if you are a coach and you talk to people and they're like, oh yeah, I'm really looking for support in this area of my life or that area of life. Like, oh, 
Oh, that's interesting. Then you realize, oh, I can shape my coaching. I can reframe my one coaching modality can serve different areas of life, different ask, different journeys of life. Well, let me go ahead and serve this aspect and journey of life or this problem that they have. I might as well, because they're telling me that they have that problem. They're looking for support on that. So you create a service or you curate. When I say curate other services or products, you can go and look for people who offer that kind of service product and maybe earn a commission by recommending them to say, oh, you know what? I want to recommend this person. I've tried it out myself. I really liked it. And you might contact them and let them know that you, you heard of it from me and, and uh, go and try it out. And then the, this, you, know, you, you arrange with your, your fellow service providers and product producers to, 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 to give you commissions if, if someone heard of it from, from you. So you can either curate product and services that your audience is looking for and or you can create them and offer it to your audience. Because if you sell what they want, what they're yearning to buy, well, guess what? They're going to buy it. <laughs> so this is, again, you may need to watch this again, a general seven-point plan on how does creating free content lead into actually getting clients. And this whole process, as you, as you listen to it again, is one of, it's, it's purposeful. It's not the typical marketing where you're like waiting with bated breath. You, you do all this work for the eventual result of getting a client. But, uh, but the seven-step plan I've just given you allows you to do marketing with a deep sense of purpose and gratitude all along the way. It's worthwhile. Every step is one where you are either growing yourself or you're supporting others and you are connecting with others. And the whole process aims to be one that is life-giving, no matter what the result is. But if you, of course, if you keep doing the seven-step process and you keep getting better at the seven-step process, of course, the results are going to be good for your business. So I hope this is encouraging. I hope this is helpful. I, I encourage you to add a comment below if you like. Share what aspect of, of this process or what aspect of this video resonated with you and, and are you going to do something about it? Let us know in the comments below. Let me know. Thank you so much for watching and joining me on this journey.